Hello, can you hear? Hello. Sir, good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. Am I audible? Hello. Hello? Yeah, good morning. I am in. Hey, I, yeah, I am in. Uh, I am uh, in. Okay, okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, madam. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Elson, good morning. Good morning. Can you, yeah. Can you hear me? I'm a little late. Yeah. No issues. Shall we start? Yeah. Uh, I just want to know where. How can I present? Prabha, madam. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, I just want to check how I can share the uh, yes, screen. Yes, sir. We can. Yes, sir. You can share the screen, sir. We will check it now. Uh, I don't know where is actually the option. I am not much comfortable. Is there any? Can, Can you see me now? Option will come in right side, sir. Right side down. Ah, uh, present now. Yes, sir. Present, present now. We can do it. Hello. Can you see? Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning, sir. One minute, sir. Can you see my share now? The share is up. Share went up. How much share? Initially, it was coming, sir. Now we are not able to see. Now you can see. Can you see my screen? No, sir. No, no sir. No. You are only audible. What about now? Hello. Yeah, it's okay. Get it now. Yes, we are getting now. Yeah, can you see now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, fine. Yeah, is my sound is clear? Yes, sir. Yeah.
Hello. Hello. Am I audible now? Yeah. 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 Again, madam, in between, if there is any problem with the sound or screen. Yeah. Uh, Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I'm able to hear you. Prabha, yes, sir. Yeah. You so, are audible to us. So, in between, if audible, there is any is problem with the sound. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hello? Uh, we will start, Hello? sir. One minute. I will give a small intro. One, one, one second. One second. If in between yes, there sir. is yes, any sir. problem with the sound or uh, screen sharing or anything, you just uh, please uh, interfere in the, in between so that there is a chance of rains here. So network issue or anything, you just uh, uh, intercept in between and uh, just tell me. Okay. Let me know. Hello? Hello? Yeah, sir. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Am I audible, sir? Morning, Am I audible, sir? Yeah, yeah, you are now audible. I am audible, right? Yes, sir. You are audible, sir. Ma'am, can you hear me? We will start, sir. Let Prabha, madam, join. Okay. Prabha, are you audible? Are you available, sir? Prabha, madam? Your voice is too low, ma. Ma'am, can you hear me? Now it is getting adjusted, I think. My voice is audible. Am I audible, Prabha? Am I audible, Prabha? Student coordinator. Mm -hmm. Prabha, madam. My voice is start. Prabha, madam, shall we start? Please start the session and make it as a slide so. Prabha, madam. Anyone please respond? My voice is audible. Your yes, voice yes. is too low, Prabha. Yes, too low, it's boy. audible, ma'am. Prabha madam, you just raise your uh, sound in your system. Try checking, maybe it may be low. Sir, please do one thing. Just turn your screen on presentation more. Yeah. Presentation is visible, sir. Shall we start? Hello, Shini. Ma'am, good morning, ma'am. Am I audible, ma'am? Good morning. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, you are audible. It seems Prabha, ma'am, is having some issues with the audio adjustment, ma'am. So she told us to start, ma'am. 
ओके ओके वी विल स्टार्ट नाउ लेट्स सी जॉइन लिटिल लेट डॉक्टर करेक्टिंग इट ओके गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल मॉर्निंग ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स एंड ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ सिविल डिपार्टमेंट ईश्वर इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज आई वेलकम डॉक्टर एल्सन जॉन वेलकम सर वेलकम टू आवर वेबिनार वेलकम टू आवर कॉलेज या थैंक यू थैंक यू मैडम यस सर टुडे वी हैव अ very interesting topic and a very important one too that is characterization of the materials and the studying of the microstructure of concrete most of us are very good in the experimentation and the interpretation of results the reading in the results is very very important to write a better paper and yeah. in that uh, the sem analysis is most of us find it very difficult to analyze the sem analysis report uh, we have a big black line in that field i hope today's uh, uh, talk will enrich us on that area which is a gray area for most of the civil engineers mostly it is a chemistry part which we don't know how to read the results of uh, i am also very eager to hear sir's speech I now request uh, Logarshni to introduce the guest speaker. Logarshni. Logarshni. Yes, ma'am. Yes, and I also congratulate the ICA student members, staff member, and ICA coordinator for organizing such a webinar. Thank you. Please, Logarshni. Yes, ma'am. A smile is a universal welcome. A very warm welcome to everyone gathered for this interesting session on. microstructural characterization of concrete it takes an immense pleasure to welcome the chief guest uh, to the uh, to welcome the speaker dr elson john holds a btech degree in civil engineering from mg university and mtech degree in structural engineering from the vishweshwara technological university and holds a phd degree from the indian institute of technology madras He is presently working as an associate professor in the Department of Civil Engineering at Mar Athanasius College of Engineering, Kothamangalam, Kerala. His areas of interest include admixtures in concrete, special concrete, the curability of concrete, etc. He has 17 years of teaching experience, 12 years of research experience. He has got more than 35 publications in various international national journals and conferences on his credit. He is a consultant to various projects in government, public and private sectors. He has guided more than 40 MTech and 10 BTech projects. Presently he is staff in charge Presently he is the staff in charge of the research center of KTU and MGU at MA College of Engineering. Center for Continuing Education and Concrete Research Laboratory at MA College of Engineering. Presently, he is the secretary to ICI Kochi chapter. It's an indeed honor to welcome you, sir. Welcome all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Uh, can I start? Sure, sir. Yeah. so thank you a uh, very good morning to all the participants and thank you madam for the wonderful uh, introduction and first of all let me congratulate and thank to the ishri college of engineering for arranging this program and giving me an, an opportunity to talk with the mainly the student community uh, so i personally thank the head of the department and uh, uh, in, uh, professor prapa for uh, inviting me for this program and to interact with you with you even though when uh, prabha madam was talking about uh, this program so even the microstructure is not my main cup of tea so i told her so uh, she asked me that what you can you can share so what all information i gathered and my uh, little experience i will uh, share you so i'm not much going into the deep of the machinery or history of the things what we require when you are as a researcher or a, as a interpreter uh, how we can get the images or the uh, use the technique and how to interpret it that's what i'm uh, trying to uh, explain and i can give you some of the examples which i have done also for uh, the research purpose so again when you are talking about the characterization of construction material it is a very tough job getting a picture is very easy 
So when you are before going to that, I have to thank my professors and as a courtesy for many of the slides and these presentations, Professor Ravindra Gato of IIT Madras, Professor Manu Sandanam of and Professor Piyush Shauzali and Professor Radhakrishnan Jeepalai of IIT Madras. So when you are talking about concrete, so for everyone, for a normal person, concrete is a very simple material. So everybody can use it. That's why in industry, people are using concrete very widely. And one of the major advantages, uh, lots of advantages is that it is comparatively cheap and uh, even uh, we can manufacture it at any place. Hello? Hello? Am I audible? Sir? Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. You can proceed, sir. Yeah. So, again, we can mold into any shape. So, people are very widely using. But there is a misconception of uh, also about the concrete. So, people are thinking that uh, nowadays, uh, concrete is just like a dump, uh, dustbin. So, they can put any waste material in the concrete and they can make the concrete. So, because they don't have a proper understanding of the characteristics or the performance of the material. So, when you are talking about the structural engineering, the first assumption in structural engineering itself is concrete as uh, the material is homogeneous and isotropic. So, when you are talking about concrete, concrete is one of the most heterogeneous material in the world. Because all of us know that concrete consists of coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, Cement, uh, cement and water. But when you are talking about the macroscopic level, that is in a structure line uh, level, it is okay because we are getting the, if we are de uh, de uh, taking different chunks or different materials, we can have a uh, uniform characteristics, maybe. But when how that performance will depends, that depends upon the ingredients of the concrete. So if you are going to deep inside the concrete, that means in the macro scale or millimeter scale, the concrete consists of fine aggregate, coarse aggregate and cement and water. So sometimes there will be admixtures also. So what I'm talking is about conventional concrete. So if you further go inside in a micro level, so if you examine the aggregates, the aggregate itself consists of many minerals like feldspar or silica, quartz, everything. And each of these minerals in the same aggregate, if we call it as granite or laterite or if we call it limestone, whatever be the aggregate, this consists of different materials. And each of these materials will have different properties in different directions. So these materials in the micro, uh, micro scale, it is not at all homogeneous or isotropic. Even if you uh, talk about the cement paste, during the hydration, we know different hydration products will form like calcium silicate hydrate, calcium hydroxide, ettringite, monosulfate. All these things have different size and different shapes and different orientations and different properties in different directions. So if you look into a macroscopic level, you can see that concrete is one of the most heterogeneous material. So we are not considering this and we are making concrete as a just as a construction material. That's one of the reason we are leading to lots of immature problems in our concrete. After constructing the uh, structure, we start repairing within no time. We are designing our structure for 50 or 60 years, but within few years or even sometimes in few months, uh, the uh, structure start to deteriorate and uh, we need to go for re repair. In Kerala, we have the examples of uh, crossing a uh, bridge itself after two uh, years of uh, service. So again, the reasons are many. I'm not go going to into detail. It can be because of the material. If there are design problems, there are construction problems, there, there can be uh, methodology problems. So this. So in this picture, if you are taking in the right side, the bridge, uh, you can see. If you are taking a core, you can see that in that core, you can see the fine aggregate, the uh, uh, cement paste or the mortar fraction. If you look at that, just magnify, you can see even the sand particles and the cement paste. So if you just take a, a small portion and magnify, so in the core, you can cylindrical portion, you can see coarse aggregate and the cement mortar. So if you magnify the cement mortar, you can see the sand particles and the cement paste in a millimeter scale. And if you are again, take a 
portion of that cement paste, if you magnify it further, you can see that the microscopic scale of that picture. You can see that lots of needle-like structures, plate-like structures, hexagonal structures. So how these are all oriented and how it will affect the performance and properties, we will let us see. Sir? Yeah. Elson, sir? Yeah, can you hear? Yes, sir. Sir, uh, can you share sir, any PPT, sir? Because we are not unable to see your PPT. See, PPTs are sharing now? No, sir. No? No, sir. Nobody is seeing your PPT, sir. PPTs. So I shared that, I don't now, know. Now it's visible. Yeah? Ah, yes, sir. Now it's visible, sir. Now is it visible? Yes, yes, sir. What about now? No, sir, it's not visible. Yes, sir. Now it's visible, sir. You can proceed, sir. Thank That's, you. That uh, bridge picture you can see, right? Yes, yes, sir. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. So from that bridge deck, if you are uh, taking a core, that you can see that cylindrical portion. In that with the naked eye itself, you can see the coarse aggregate and the motor fraction. So if you magnify with some uh, uh, instrument that motor fraction, you can see that sand particle as well as uh, the cement paste. So can you see my pointer also, my arrow? Hello? Can you see see the pointer? Uh, no, sir. We didn't see the pointer. Let me try. I think that's all done. Okay. So can you see the lines now? Yes, sir. Yes. You can see. So if you magnify that motor fraction, you can see the fine aggregate here and the cement paste here. So if you take a small portion, what I'm talking at a microscopic level from the cement paste, and if you magnify, you can see that uh, microstructure of that cement paste. In that you can see the needle-like structures, you can see the CSS gel type structures, here you can see the plate-like structures, here you can see the hexagonal type particles. So these are all different composite or materials inside the cement paste. The needle-like structures, all of you know that is the ettringite, the plate-like structures, maybe the uh, monosulfate, the hexagonal crystals, what you can see here, hexagonal shaped crystals are the calcium silicate hybrid or this. So these are all different materials and it will have different properties in different orientations. So when you are going for a microstructure analysis, you want to determine what you want to actually see from this analysis or the results. So there are different techniques available for that. So in today's lecture, what I'm going to discuss more about the uh, scanning electron microscopy uh, and I'll give a brief introduction about the XRD and TGA, thermogravimetric analysis as well as the X-ray diffraction techniques because a single uh, technique is not always sufficient to uh, get the Re, uh, required results or the interpretations. So we need a complementary techniques to interpret uh, the, uh, the required quantities with the different tests. So if you can take that and different techniques are there, optical microscopy is there, scanning electron microscopy, transmission electron mic microscopy, XRD, etc. So the selection of the techniques depends upon which uh, level you want to see the structure or what is your required uh, result from that. So from the optical microscopy, we can just magnify with the microscope and we can see the different grains and the pores inside that, the grain boundaries, grains, etc. So if you're going too deep, so what we are talking about the size of in micros, so around uh, 10 raised to minus 2 to minus uh, 4. So again, if you're going for a ACM, you can go for more micro level. So micro means what we are talking is in the range of 10 raised to minus 3. It's all of you know that uh, uh, micro means it is 10 raised to minus 6. So in that we can see that different boundaries. If you take the case of a cement, you can see uh, these uh, C3S, C2S and different compounds and how they are or oriented 
and we can see the grain boundaries also with this help of this. You can see that these are the grain boundaries, then can be ports or something like that in that. So if you further go inside, if you do, uh, want to know the a crystal structure of the pan or you want to know the crystallinity or the atomic structure you want to go for further minute techniques so which can uh, talk about the nano scale and uh, in armstrong armstrong means it is 10 raised to minus 10 so they depends upon which level investigation you want to do you have to select your uh, equipment accordingly but I'm again telling one uh, method is not always sufficient to get this sufficient information from this. So when we are talking into micro and nano level, it is the basic research. So I'm in the microscopic level, we are going for applied research. So it depends upon which level your research is going on. So when you are going for any of the uh, microstructural techniques, the most important thing is the sampling. sampling. So that is the most critical. Sometimes it is it is more important than the techniques itself because we get the right sample to get the right information. So how to collect? Because we are talking about only few mm cube samples from several m cube of concrete. So from where we have to take and how much we want to take that matters and how we are preparing the sample that's also matters to a lot. So the purpose need to be worked out. What level of information and which technique you need and you have to get the sampling accordingly. So if you want to get a internal structure, how much for example, how much hydration is happening in a concrete inside the sample, you need to go for a sampling from the inside portion. But if your intention is to get a external details, that means how much sulfate attack is happening in a concrete or how much carbonation is happening on the a concrete. So these things will start from the uh, surface and it will penetrate through inside. So what we need to do that you have to take a sample from the surface, then you have to take the sample from regular interval from inside so that by inspecting or by studying each of the sample, you can see that what is the intensity of this particular sulfate attack on the or the compounds and the surface, say one mm or two mm inside, four mm inside. So we can get the details or the concentration at each interval so that we will get a picture how the ingress is going on. So the sampling is very important and from where to take the sample and uh, how to, uh, what is the quantity of the sample and how to prepare the sample that is very, very important. So how much sample I'm not going to. So different uh, techniques uh, need different quantities of samples that you can see. So that depends upon the techniques you can uh, select it from the literature or from the specification. So again, the hydration stoppage. So that is one of the uh, tough job in doing the uh, sample, collecting the samples. So you want to study the properties of concrete after 28 days. How much hydration is happened, or how much calcium hydroxide is produced, or how much uh, calcium silicate hydrate is produced. So we want to take the uh, sample at that particular age, 28 days. But what happens? We need the time to prepare the sample. Again, the equipment may not be available at that time. We want to wait for the stop. So what happens if you are keeping your samples for a long time, what happens that the hydration will still uh, proceed. So we need to stop the hydration. So critical for establishing the correct age. So there are uh, particularly important for technical that employs vacuum. In general, better to remove water before long time specimens from storage. So the hydration is proceeding or the what we are talking about, the durability issues, sulfate attack, everything is happening in the presence of moisture. So the most important thing is to cut down the water source as well as removing the water from the sample. So there are different techniques available for that. So we can go for oven drying, vacuum, vacuum drying, freeze drying and solvent exchange. These are the commonly used uh, techniques for that. So first one, let us see oven drying. All of you know that what is oven drying. Keep these uh, samples inside the specimen and heat up to uh, one not five degrees centigrade. So what happens? The water in the specimens and pores will be um, 
evaporated it will be dried off from the surface so such but the problem is that such heating can alter the microstructure or sometimes destroy the phases also so in depends upon the phases present in this can decompose or it can destroy the uh, phases and it can alter because of the uh, removal of water so lower temperature heating can be adopted but the problem is that we can't assure that the complete we, uh, removal of the free fat, uh, water from that so we can combine this with the vacuum drying so we are creating a vacuum so that the uh, uh, inside the samples the pressure will be more so the water will be uh, taken out because of the vacuum then freeze drying that's one of the better method if you have the equipment for that first lower the temperature to the freezing point of water when we are talking the freezing of water normal water may uh, freeze at uh, below zero degree or maybe four degree or something that depends upon the impurities but when you are talking about the port inside, uh, inside the water inside the ports it needs much hello Hello, can you hear? Hello? Hello, can you hear? Hello, yes, sir. Yes, sir, you could proceed. Yeah, some disturbance is coming. That's okay. So, when you are talking about the water in the pores, it will take much lower temperature to freeze. So, depend upon the porosity or the size of the pores, we have to decide and have it. And after uh, uh, freezing the samples, what we do is we will lower the pressure. So, creating vacuum or lower the pressure so that what happens that the sublimation will take place from the solid state, it will evaporate. So, that like uh, in that way, we can take out the water from the uh, sample and make it. And there is solvent exchange uh, uh, process that is easy to do, but there it also has its own drawbacks. So, the sample is immersed in acetal or isopropanol. That is a very easy method. You take the chunk or the piece of the sample. Uh, image that in acetone or isopropanol, so the solvent exchange process will take place. These solvents will replace the place where water is occupied. And when you take it in it and dry it, uh, these uh, chemicals will evaporate and you can do that with the help of the uh, vacuum so that better drying takes place. So again, this when you are using your sample, you should understand for which sample you are using because this chemical may can uh, interfere or react with some of the phases so that you have to take place. So again you have to, carbonation is a major issue, you know the carbonation in the congregate, so the calcium hydroxide in the congregate will uh, re uh, interact with the calcium, uh, sorry, carbon dioxide in the uh, atmosphere and it can convert to calcium carbonate. So the carbonation can be, uh, should be minimized and should be taken care of. So I just mentioned the, some of the advantages and disadvantages of di direct drying. So it is easy to perform, preserve chemically bound water in the hydrated phases, then preserve microstructure, removes probable uh, anons from the solutions. So again, the problems with uh, for the direct method, oven drying is easy to perform, vacuum and freeze drying need equipment. So, if you are using an oven, that will be easy, then suppress carbonation in that case. But it has the disadvantage, uh, disadvantage also, when you are going for a solvent exchange, alteration of hydration products or removal of chemically bounded water may uh, <coughs> by some organic solvents. So, in the direct uh, drying method, generally chemically water removes also removed so that can interface the interfere the microstructure so we should be careful about the techniques so you can see that xrd images of a stored sample so this is a, the bottom is the fresh uh, slice sample and when you are adding you can see the different components i'll uh, tell you later how to identify but in this sample and this is exposed after slice and exposed so what you can see that there's a c this is calcium carbonate so carbonation is uh, taking place at that stage so we can have a traces of uh, calcium carbonate. So this can happen in our concrete. So let us now little talk about the microscopy. These are the, about the sample preparation in general. 
So there are different uh, techniques are available for the microscopy. We have optical microscopy, scanning electron microscopy, transmission electron microscopy, scanning tunnel microscopy, scanning probe microscopy, infrastructure mi microscopy, etc. So what I am just going to give you a brief introduction of the first two technologies, optical microscopy and scanning electron microscopy. So the comparison between these two, in optical micro, uh, microscopy, what we are doing is that we are passing the light through the specimens. So we will have a, a light source and that will pass through the condenser and it will focus the light on the specimens. So this is the objective and the objective is the specimens will be uh, made here and this ray of light will be incident on the sample space and for that, what we need to that we need to slice the specimens and we made to polish to such a level that the specimen will become opaque. That means it should pass through the light. So in concrete, we know that it is not opaque. So we want to slice it. We want to polish into the level of thickness of in microns and we can pass the light to that. So the light will pass through and different components of this material will have different densities. So the intensity of light coming out from the specimen, slice micro specimens will be then and that can be passed through the objectives and we can uh, see it through a naked eyepiece, through the eyepiece. We can see it through the eye, uh, eyes or uh, eyes or we can take the picture of that. So this is uh, like just normal optical microscopy, which I think many of you might have used during your uh, pre-degree labs also, those who are in the science stream, so to inspect the sample. So the same thing. But in the case of scanning electron microscopy, instead of the light source, we are using the electrons. So the electrons will bombard on the surface and uh, the... <coughs> Because of the interaction, electrons will be ejected from the samples and that sample will be collected and you can get the images in a CRT or whatever the monitor we have, we can have it. So in this light is passing, optical microscopy, light is passing through the specimen whereas in the optical microscopy, it is interacting with the specimen and the ejected electrons will be monitored and it will give you a picture. So again, the specimen preparation for this microscopy, again, I'm telling you that probably more important than microscopy. If your specimen uh, is not properly prepared, you will not get the required data or a proper image. So that is very, very important. So there are two types. Some of these uh, techniques, we need only the fractured specimens. So you just uh, break the specimen, take a sample from that or after doing the compression test, you can take a chunk, a small piece and you can, or you can break it and you can take a, a specimen and you can directly use in uh, the scanning electron microscopy. So that is the secondary imaging techniques. I will tell you how that. So in that case, you need not do any pre uh, preparation of the specimens itself. Take a small specimen which suits the, uh, your machine because the dimension has to be check and such a take a specimen and just uh, do the imaging. And in the other method of optical microscopy as well as the backscattered electron microscopy, you need to really prepare your specimen. So you want to use uh, polish your specimens uh, for that. So I'll tell you just a specimen. So if you have a core or if you want to test it, you, may, you are making the cubes in the specimen uh, in the laboratory or if you want to uh, study the properties or for moments or what is happening inside a real-time structure, you need to take a core from that. Take a core from that, take a piece, then cut into small sizes, normally two centimeter sizes we are taking. Cut that that core. The core, you can see that the core is cutting from here. So this core, we can uh, use the saw cutting, we can make it to saw, uh, small pieces and conditioning. So it will have the pores and everything. So when you are polishing, the specimens will or the pore structure will get damaged because what we are polishing is normally at the level of uh, one microns. So that grinding will take even away. So that can spoil the uh, um, uh, microstructure of the specimen. So what we do is we will impregnate the specimens with the epoxy. Low viscous, viscosity epoxies are used for that so that what we are doing is uh, that uh, with the low viscosity, epoxy will percolate to the specimen. 
so that the pore structure will be filled with this epoxy, uh, epoxy so that the microstructure will not be affected because of that. So after that, it will be a small piece, cylindrical piece normally, that depends upon the mold which you are using for the epoxy impregnation. And that again, with the help of the uh, fine cutting saw, we can cut into small pieces that will suit your polishing machine uh, or your microstructure uh, equipment. So this is actually the automated uh, polishing specimen. So I will show that again. So this was one of the technique which we are using. So this is actually the epoxy impregnation. After the epoxy impregnation, they, you will get a piece like this. It will have some thickness, but that thickness uh, may not be uh, suitable for the polishing machine or in your uh, scanning electron microscopy. So it will have hardly one half centimeter or one centimeter thick specimens. So we will cut that with the help of the a fine saw cutting machines so we will from this junks we will make this specimen like this and this can be or that you can do after polishing also either you can cut it and polish or you can polish it so this is the polishing machine we have the polishing disc on that so different like that your uh, sandpaper or emery paper or carbon under paper it has different grain uh, size uh, on that so like that this also have different microns capacity so first we will uh, go ahead with the coarser one then we will go to the finer ones so this is a procedure what we were using earlier so we need to keep this specimen so if we are finally polished specimen sometimes it will take eight to ten hours so you want to hold the specimens and you want to polish it so again now we have the sophisticated equipments like this. So this have arms at the bottom. So you have to uh, fix these uh, specimens in the arms. So there are different capacities. Some of the machine may have eight arms or six arms. That depends upon the capacity of this machine. So within that uh, stipulated time, you can uh, polish eight specimens. And this is a uh, spray which we are using for the diamond spray. So that will have the micron particles. So that will add the grinding so you can grind. So this is actually the equipment for that polishing machine. So after polishing, the epoxy will be impregnated. So you can see that there is a, a pores. You can see that there is a, a perfect bond between this uh, epoxy and the uh, concrete or the specimens which is uh, then in that. So you can see these are this inter interface we are magnifying with the scale of a picture. So if this uh, this is not perfect, then breakage and damage of the specimen can happen. So again, this is a polishing machine which I was using. So this is the epoxy impregnation machine. So uh, what we will have that we will keep the specimens inside this uh, and. Uh, we will create a vacuum inside that. So all the water inside the pores will be taken out and uh, so that uh, uh, space will be there. So that will be impregnated with the, and then the epoxy will be filled, poured inside this small sample holders or uh, sample vessels. So epoxy will be poured using this specimen so that because of the pores inside and because uh, as it is a low viscosity polymer, the, polymer, the epoxy will impregnate and you can make. And this is a polishing machine with the eight amps which I was using. And this is the cutting machine which we use. So again, after this for optical microscopy, what I'm talking, going to talk about optical microscopy and for optical microscopy, the sample size is not like that. What I shown is for the scanning electron microscopy. That is why that thick specimens for optical microscopy, we need a, a very fine, maybe in microns, five or 10 microns thick specimens for the light to transmit through. So again, for that after polishing, if you want to see, you can yes the surface. So when you are etching, that depends upon which chemical, uh, uh, depend the, which specimen you are using. So etching, all of you know. Uh, so when you are applying the chemical, this will interact with some of the crystals or the com uh, compounds in that. So sometimes it, uh, some of the parts will be uh, eaten away. So you will get the uh, topography, or some will uh, 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 react and uh, uh, absorb, and it will change the contract. So because of the shape of the grains or the contract, we can identify, identify the different phases in that. So again, for electron microscopy, when you are directly uh, impreg uh, impregnating the or uh, 
contacting the electron with the concrete surface, there will be surface charge. So you will get a total bright image. You will not get the sufficient uh, uh, details from that. So we need a coating for that. You can go to the carbon or the for better results, you can go for gold palladium concrete. So this puttering technology is uh, used for that. You can search in your net to get uh, more details about this uh, technology. It will be in the form of vapor and that will get absorbed on the surface. So you just uh, Google search puttering, you will get the details. So now about the uh, optical microscopy, I told you that we will make this specimen opaque and the light is uh, allowed to transmit. So with this, what we can see that we can get the images like this. So we can see that from this, this is the picture of a cement clicker. So with that, we can see that the different faces. You can see that irregular crystals are C2S in our sample and the more rounded uh, 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 particles are the C3S. And this white mass, which you can, the flux, which you can see is a, a, a combination of this flux uh, C4AF and C3A. So with that, but in microscopy, if you want to identify your contents, you should not, you should know what exactly what you are looking and what is, what, uh, what you are seeing. It's morphology, it is peculiarities, you need to know. So again, in this picture also, you can see that more uh, non irregular crystals are there so with this we can identify which are the compounds in that so again Klinger shows a typical uh, view of uh, more uh, c3s in that so again we sort of high c2s with the uh, uh, irregular crystals with the shape and size of the crystals we can identify these faces so we need an understanding on the a different compounds exactly. so again if you want to go for uh, finding a cracks after loading if you want to know where the crack is again, if there is any micro cracks you can use the same techniques so you can see that the cracks are propagating in fact with this uh, techniques you can see that the cracks are propagating so these are 70 times magnified images optical microscopy and this is an ASR you know in some places there are uh, aggregates which will react with the uh, alkali in the uh, cementitious system and it can expand and uh, lead to uh, expansive cracks because it will form a gel around the surface of the uh, aggregate so you can see the gels form here and this gel will exert pressure on the cement paste and when it exceeds the capacity of tensile capacity of the paste it can create cracks so you can identify the internal cracks in that so sometimes if you want to if you want to uh, examine the laterite or a uh, coarse aggregate what are the minerals in the inside that you can go for a polarized light so that can interact with the different crystals and it can give to different light uh, color to the light so by uh, giving uh, by understanding the uh, color of that crystals with that particular light we can identify this uh, which are minerals are present and if you want you can uh, quantify that also so it's a very powerful technique uh, so that's about the optical microscopy uh, now let us move to the scanning electron microscopy so we have some limitation for the optical microscopy so the maximum capacity nowadays available is around uh, 10,000 times but when you are talking about the nano scale or micro scale or in the Armstrong scale we need much more magnification so the capacity of the uh, optical electron microscopy is limited in that case. So people who are thinking about uh, for accurate uh, uh, or high capacity techniques that comes into the uh, use of uh, or the development of scanning electron microscopy. So let us see. So in this what happens that a high voltage is given to uh, a electron gun that's a filament normally used material is tungsten so it will uh, generate electrons. So that electrons will be pass through a magnifying uh, magnetic lens so it will uh, focus that and do the through the objective uh, lens also it is fo focusing on a uh, particular point so these electrons will uh, interact with the specimens in below that what i'm talking that specimen area is in microns so when it is in a, in a interacting different types of electrons will be uh, generating so we will have this select 
secondary electrons, backscattered electrons, and X-rays. I will tell you how this will be generating in the next slides. So these are the equipment. So we have the column, the X-rays will be generated, and sample holder will be there. And in this, actually, if you are using air, the uh, components in the air or electrons in the air, uh, or gases in the air can interfere with the electrons as well as the specimens. So you will get a will not get a proper imaging. So we need to create a vacuum inside the uh, system. And for the cementitious system, naturally we are using a nitrogen atmosphere. We will fill with a nitrogen gas because nitrogen is an uh, inert material, all of you, uh, gas that all of you know. So these are the uh, electron gun which will produce the uh, a high. <clears throat> well, uh, voltage is given that so that it will generate electrons and this aperture will control the size of these electrons. You can see that this is a magnetic lenses. It will focus that objective lens will finally focus and where we should focus that lens. So if the your focus is not uh, proper, you will not get, get a clear image. Just like in your normal photography, if you want to get a good picture, you should clearly focus your lens to that image. If the uh, image is on the out of focus, you will get a blurred image. So that is very important. So different types of detectors are there. So secondary, backscattered, and EDS detectors that you can see. So this is actually what is happening. When the electron is interacting with the specimens, there will be auger electrons from the surface. There will be secondary electrons from the nearby surface. And from that, you will get the backscattered electrons and the x-rays also will be produced from this. So what is the secondary electrons? So these electrons arise due to the inelastic collision between the primary electrons and loosely bound outer shell electrons. So when it is interacting with a crystal or a molecule, what happens is that, or an atom, what happens is that these electrons have high uh, energy and velocity so it will collide with the electrons on the outer shells so the outer shell electrons will get more energy and that is sufficient for them to uh, come out of the uh, shell or the sh uh, shell or the orbit so for this you need an understanding of the microcircular or molecular science so i'm not going to much of the physics or the quantum mechanics behind that so these electrons will be a coming out that is the secondary electrons so what happens that that is the secondary electrons so again what happens is that when you are breaking normally the secondary electron image is for the uh, broken specimen you are not breaking the uh, uh, specimens so what happens is that when you are breaking the surface there will be undulations so from the top areas or the elevated areas more interaction will take place and more electrons will be generated so that portion will be brighter but there is a valley from this valley what happens that uh, it will uh, lower uh, or less uh, molecules will be impacted so it will be darker so this actually this contrast will give you a topographic image of that so i will show you that uh, later so backscattered electrons are what happens that some of the electrons from the filament will uh, collide with the nucleus and it will be diffracted. So these are the backscattered electrons from the nucleus and it will be dictated with the help of the backscattered electron uh, detectors. So I'm not going much about that. So what information can be obtained from SCM? So first one is the topography. That will give you how the topography looks like, just like our earth crust, how the undulations and everything. So the surface features of the object or how it looks, its texture, everything. It will have a direct relation between these features and material properties. Uh, again, softness, abrasion resistance, all this, or the interlocking, everything is there. Then morphology. So the say, uh, shape and size of the particle making up the object. So I told you earlier how we can detect the C3S, C2S, etc. So the shape and size of the particle making the object will give lots of information about the microstructure. So that will have the direct relation between these structures and material properties. So if there is uh, more C3S, rounded particles are there, we can see that 
uh, the initial hydration will be more because we know uh, initial hydration will be more from the C3S. So that directly re relates with the property of the cement. If C3S is there, the reaction will be slower. So that we know. Again, the composition. The elements and compounds that the object is composed of and the relative amounts of that. So by imaging analysis, we can go for the uh, quantitative analysis also that will come later. So that also how direct relation with the composition and material properties. Then the crystallographic or uh, information, how the atoms are arranged in the object. And again, what are the crystals are uh, present that some reactions are happening, which compounds are formed, all this information can be gathered from SEM images. So some of the important aspect is we are uh, how much area we are, the spot size normally we refer, uh, we are taking. If we are going for a higher ma magnification, the resolution will be compromised. So uh, uh, you will get a blur damage or you will not get this sufficient details. So the spot size as well as the depth of field is very important. That's why I am talking, if you are going for a sm uh, small, uh, spot size clear images can be done based with its big spot size a vague image can be formed again uh, lens properties i'm not going much about that very abrasion so if you are i told you about the focus if you are going for a normal good focus you will get a perfect image like this you can see the different colors the black veins are the uh, pores inside this concrete and if you are uh, the lens spot is off if it is uh, not focus, you can see that blurred images. So if you are getting stigmatism as well as not focus, you will get a, a, a vague image as what you are seeing on the right image. From that, we can't get any information. So the quality of image which you are getting is very, very important in getting the desired results and interpretations. So this is actually what I call that. If it is an optical microscopy, what we ca you can get is a uh, op 2D damage. You can just see in optical microscopy the different crystals and crystal orientations. So, but from scanning electron microscope, you can get a three-dimensional image from the secondary electron microscopy. So, the different layers can be formed. So, if in a cement hydration, the uh, different how the crystals are drawn and what is the uh, what is the different layers of that structure, uh, all these things we can see. Yeah, madam, am I audible? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. So let us see some of the, I just talked about the factors to be concerned and the image. So let us uh, see some of the images which we can, uh, uh, samples of images. So we can see that. So when you are getting an image, this is a Polish um, a image from a microstructure. So what we can see that, you can see that at the bottom, you can see that dimension. So this much dimension is 200 mm. So what we can see that fold up or for, from the uh, image, you can see that it may be a, a cement particle, fully hydrated cement particle. Sometimes there will be iron hydrated. So this is a white portion. I will tell you that again. So these are the a CSH or the matrix in between. So if you want, and these black spots, what you can see is the pores, the black spots. Because in a, if you are in a looking into an image of a cement paste, what we can see the brightest particles are the unhydrated cement particles. Then you can see the ettringite with a different grayscale. Normally we are identifying it with the help of the grayscale. Each of the components will have different grayscale cement unhydrated cement uh, will have the brightest even that itself the cts c2s then the c4f if each, each of these content will have different grayscale so with this help of that we can identify this hydration and how much cement grains are uh, hydrated so these black spots are uh, pores so in this image you can see that this is a cement base and you can see that this is a csh and you can see it's a micro pores. These black dots inside this uh, square is pores. So if you want to see what is there, you can again magnify that. So this portion is magnified here. So what we can say, this is 200 microns. So when you are seeing this is this much depth is only 10 microns. microns. So you can they see that. So these pores we are actually enlarging. So we can see more. And this picture is taken at a 1,600 uh, times magnification. And if you are not sure, you don't know what it is. 
So whether it is CSH or uh, calcium hydroxide or a monosulfate, what you can do that you can go for a, a edux. So X-rays can be taken from this time and this will give you the chemical composition. Even you will get a graph and you can, uh, with the help of the edux, you will get a quantitative list of the uh, compounds or the uh, more, uh, uh, atoms present in cells. So the, from the help of the relative proportion of that, we can said that uh, it is CSH or calcium hydroxide. So we know that the calcium to uh, silica ratio of uh, CSH, calcium silicate hydrate is around uh, 1.5. So from that composition, if you are getting, uh, you will get the uh, quantity of calcium hydroxide, then you will get the uh, uh, ratio of silicon oxide. So if it is 1.5, you can say that it is it may be calcium hydroxide so even one technique is not sufficient we can go for other techniques also to ensure that it is that it will give an idea so this is a very interesting image that you can see so this is a, a, a scanning electron microscope backscattered electron microscope of a polish specimen of a cement piece so you can see that these are the initial cement grain this is a initial cement grain cement grain so due to time, the cement is hydrating. And you can see that these white particles are the, the brightest particles are the unhydrated cement particles. And you can see some portions with the different grayscale here. These are hydrated cement paste. So due to the time, the hydration is proceeding inside the cement particles. So more and more cement particles will get hydrated. How much it is hydrated, that depends upon the a time, age of hydration, water cement ratio, type of cement, the composition of cement, lot of, uh, but it will give an idea. And you can see that dark pores are the, dark spaces are the pores, dark spaces are the pores. So we know inside the cement base there are lots of pores. So even inside the CSH there are only pores. So what I have shown this is pores inside the cement base, that is why the interstructural uh, uh, pores. So here you can see a pore. So you can see that it's a, it may be an aggregate particle. This may be cement particle. So you can see that pores. So if you want to magnify, you can magnify this and that. So this is a magnified view of the pores. So you can see more clear picture, how much is hydrated. And normally we know that the calcium silicate hydrate will deposit in the intertransient zone. Intertransient zone is the gap between the cement particles and the aggregate. So it will be normally uh, in few microns or in sometimes 0.5 or 1 mm. So you can see that this great scale uh, consists of calcium hydroxide. So you can see that around the uh, rim of the particles there will be calcium hydroxide deposit. And you know the calcium hydroxide will not have much binding property. So that is why in normal concrete they, when you after breaking, if you check your specimens, you can see that the cracks are propagating around the aggregate. So because of this, you can see that uh, uh, certain gaps also. So that will be the weaker, weaker salt. So you can see that in the microscopic picture. So you, you will get a lot of information. So uh, it's a very powerful uh, tool. So the time is limited. So I'm moving so again if you want to inspect the old concrete you can see the damages so you can take a specimen you can polish it you can see you can see the internal crack. sometimes there is a maybe a sulfate attack in the uh, concrete you can see that whether how much uh, sulfate attack is produced whether starter cracks you can see the micro cracks inside that so when you are doing checking the cracks you should ensure that proper specimen preparation techniques should be used Otherwise, during the uh, propagation, the cracks can propagate or it can get damaged. You may not get a realistic picture. So you can see that because of the sulfate, what are the common uh, processes? In the scanning electron microscope, you can get a picture like this. So you can see that these are the pores. Lots of disintegration has happened that. And we have some compounds here. So if you want to identify that, do a ERAC study that is associated with the scanning electron microscope. Most of the machine that depends upon the type of machine you are using. So you take a ERAC. So from that, you can find out the composition is magnesium sulfate hydrate. So the uh, calcium in the calcium silicate hydrate can be uh, reacted with the sulfates and uh, it is uh, uh, converted to magnesium sulfate hydrate. So like that techniques, uh, you can identify this composition. Again, this is a chloride attack specimens and you can see the 
uh, ASR damage. I told you the alkali silica trend that can create lots of cracks inside the structure. So uh, take a picture, uh, you can see the cracks inside that picture. So again, the swamble preparation is very, very important. So again, if you want to see the corrosion, in a reinforcement, whether the reinforcements are corroded or not. So you can take a picture. So this is a concrete part. So with the uh, image analysis, they made it black. This is the steel part. So you can see that how the corrosion has happened because of that, the volume is increased, how much volume is increases, all these things you can find out. This is again a steel, the corrosion is happening inside. So the how much corroded, how much reinforced area is, all these things can be identified. When I am talking, these are on micro scales. So don't think that by seeing the images. Again, you can see that this is a ice pour. Uh, so we are using the uh, air and draining agents in the concrete to resist the freeze to pores. So the pores are connected. So when the uh, water is converted to ice, it will exert pressure, it will increase oil. So it will pressure the it will exert pressure on the walls. So if there's a pore inside that, through the voids, water will pull inside the uh, pores and you can see it is getting condensed inside the cement pores. This is actually a pores inside the cement base and you can see the water is coming through the pores when it freezes so it will relax the pressure inside the uh, concrete and freeze to damage can be reduced. Again it's a very interesting image for a steel or we are doing the uh, tension test on steel. So after test you can see that a neck will be formed and a cup and, cup and corn failure will be there. So if you magnify this image, you will get. If you further magnify that, you can see the different uh, crystals of iron and how it is oriented, the grain boundaries, etc. This is how actually 9, 990x times. So if you further magnify, you can see the crystal boundaries exactly, how the cracks are propagating, all this. So stainless steel corrosion pit in a steel, you can see that. So again, I have used this techniques for uh, studying the effect of temperature in concrete. So we have the, the varying ambient temperature in our area. So in a town, especially we take in the Chennai. So in the winter time, the temperature may be around 15 degrees centigrade, but in summer it can be 45 or more. So the variation, seasonal variation in temperature itself around 30 degrees centigrade. Even in the day itself, the night it may be 20 degrees now, and in the uh, peak that time in the summer it may be 45. So 20 to 25 degrees in a, a difference in temperature can lead to lots of microstructure, a difference in the microstructure of the concrete. So we can identify. So I was trying to find out what uh, techniques we can use and how microscopy can help to understand this. So we have, you may be thinking how I can do the casting all the time. So what we have, we have a chamber. This facility is available in IIT Madras. It has a chamber of three meter length, two meter width and two meter height. So we can make all the ingredients of concrete inside along with the mold and mixer machine. You can see me standing here doing the experiment. So all the material will be preconditioned for two days. So all the material will have the same temperature. The concrete will be mixed at the same temperature and the specimens will be keeping at that temperature for uh, 24 hours. After that, the specimen will be molded and taken for the test. So why that? Because we want to continue the test. So uh, after that 24 hours, uh, the curing were done at ambient temperature. That is in 27 degree plus or minus two degrees centigrade plus 95% uh, is plenty of humidity. So this initial temperature will affect the microstructure of the concrete. So let us see how scanning electron microscopy can help in determine the micro uh, process. So actually, this is a cement base prepared at 5 degrees centigrade. I just want to show how the uh, microstructure will be developed in cement base. So you can see that at half setting. Half setting, what I uh, recommend uh, doing is the time from the water added to the cement paste plus when the wicked needle printed 20 mm. So when the final setting is at the end, uh, Initially, it will be penetrated fully till the bottom. So at the final setting time, it will not uh, penetrate through the cement base. So what we are doing that, take the sand till it reaches 20 mm 
penetration. You can see that this is a clear cement particle and this is also a cement particle. Not much reactions are happened, cement particles, some little uh, gel-like structures are formed, that is a, maybe the CSH. So again after one day you can see some CSH is uh, forming and start binding the pores, these blacks are the pores. Black, or always pores will be in black color in uh, scanning electron microscopy. So again three day it is more probing, you can see the grain boundaries are crossing and seven days you can see that. The more pores are filled with the hydration products and 28 days you can see that in that structure. So the pores are reduced so we will get. So this is a process where we get strength in with our days. So this is can be studied at any days, any days what you want. Again, I studied at half, half setting at different temperatures. So you can see that at 5 degrees centigrade, you can see clearly see the cement particles and the gaps. So at 15 degrees centigrade, actually the needle-like structures are the ettringite. So more and more hydrations are happening. So when the time temperature increases, all these specimens corresponding to half setting. So for at 5 degree, the half setting happen maybe in 6 hours, but at 40 degree, it may be in 30 degree, uh, centigrade. So I have the data, but because of the time, I'm not there. But at 35 and 40 degree centigrade, we have more and more reaction uh, products are there. Even the calcium hydroxides are pro pro uh, 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 produced at air temperature. Again, you may be feeling that more attenuated and monosulfides are processed here, and why not? It is producing here, but these are uh, uh, buried with the more CSH, calcium silicate hydrate. These gel touch structures are calcium silicate hydrate. So in, if you want to interpret the data, you know what each of the compounds, what its composition, how it behaves, and the hydration products, or what are the phenomena, if it is sulfate attack, what happens during the sulfate attack, and what are the material or the compounds formed because of the sulfate attack, you know that, and it's peculiarities. So again, this is with a superglass paste. So again, this is a comparison, just I compared for the 25 degrees earlier. So here it is for the one day. You can see that after one day more hydrations are happen. But you can see still you can see the grain boundaries and lots of pores are there inside that. But at 40 degrees you can see more hydrations are happen and the pores are less more. So, so what happens, that's why if you are going doing our concrete in a uh, at a high temperature, in a sunny day, the concrete will stiff fast and you will get more early strength, that all of you know. So temperature is an accident of cement hydration reactions. So that is very evident here. Here also you can see more hydration products are there in hydro. And one more thing, when you are comparing the different pictures, I don't think that why I can see that uh, crystal structures are there, why here we can see more boundaries. What happened is that there also you should like that. So in this picture, this length is 10 micrometer, and here this is 30. So that scale also you should convert. Why we this change in that? So sometimes we not get a properly focused uh, specimen at this mag magnification. This is around 400 degree magnification. This image is 400 degree times magnified. This is at 500 degree a magnification, but this is only 200 degree magnification. That's why I told you image analysis is very very important. So these things also you should not uh, while doing the image analysis. Again this is at 7 days and this is very important. So we have seen that at 40 degrees in the initial days we can more hydration products and less pores are there but after 28 days you can see that the concrete exposed to lower temperature 5, 15, 25 etc exposed to initial lower temperature has more intact and dense. You can see that much pores here. But the specimen exposed at higher temperature, you can see more pores and more porous structure. So when you are exposed to initial higher temperature for the concrete, the initial strength will be more, but the long time strength as well as durability will be reduced. I have the test data, but the time is not sufficient for that. So what happens? So when, the, when we have a more dense structure, we will have more strength. And when the microstructure is uh, porous, the strength will be reduced and even the durability, because all the deterioration mechanism is percolate through the pores. So this is for super processed cement paste. I'm just tracking. So again, these are the that what you have shown is the uh, 
secondary electron images. That's why you can see the topography and the uh, image. So these are the uh, polished specimens. So again, I compared after one day, you can see that not much hydrations are happening. These are the cement grains, and they now you can see that different phases of cement also and lots of pores. So at 40 degrees centigrade, uh, you can see more hydrated products and pores are also high in this case. In the case, even after five degree, one day also you can see with PC. Again, this is very important. So the specimen exposed to initial lower temperature shows higher or more denser microstructure at 28 days where at 40 degree you can see more porous microstructure that again supplement the results which we are getting the uh, secondary electron microscope again when you are incorporating a super class laser what happens you are getting a better microstructure in after 28 days at higher temperature you can see that there are lots of pores but when you are using the uh, PC, but when you are using the super class laser, the industrial hydration will be altered, even the microstructure of the hydration products also okay. So you may be thinking that here uh, at 5 degree and 40 degree, uh, you may have more pores. Actually, these are not pores. This you can see at the bottom. Pores will be like that bright pores. So actually there may be a hydrated product there. So this came out during the polishing surface. So if you want to practice, you have to have an understanding. So you can magnify and you can say that. You can check whether it is cracked or not. So that we can fix that. This is again the same image. So when I'm talking, I'm taking just five minutes for image analysis. I'm exceeding the time. So imaging analysis. Uh, so imagine uh, image interpretation. So Prabhamanan, can I take five more minutes for this image analysis? Sir, you can proceed. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, image, well, you can get. So, if you give the sample to somebody, uh, they will give a pic picture. But that will not help you in any way. That's why I am, uh, I am emphasizing when you are doing a scanning electron microscopy image, you have to be sure that what you want to identify. And you have to identify because you are, for example, if you are st uh, studying the influence of fly ash or a supplementary cementitious material in concrete. And when you are taking the image, we are taking from a only a microscopic level. So you are taking a picture in the area. Sometimes there may not be any fly ash particles at that point. So you want to know what is the particle, how it looks or where you want to take. And you have to search in sample and you have to find out the area which what you are looking and take the image. Uh, and you want to identify that components are there. So a single image somebody is sending may not help you uh, in most of the cases. So again, getting an image is easy. Somebody can take a project, but image inter interpretation can be very difficult. So again, there are lots of illusions. I just show you a few, few of illusions. So you can have a, a you have a picture. So by just looking at, you can see that the height of this uh, line and this line are different. All of you feel that the right side line is much bigger than this one, right? But it is not like if you measure it, both the lines of are of same length. But because of these lines, we are feeling that. So like that, when you are getting a figure, you will get a, a idea, but that may not be properly, uh, maybe sufficient. You can see, stare at this, I have a glass, glaze at this image for a few seconds. You can see that uh, the stairs are upside down. Sometimes you can see it in the side, and you can see that whether sometimes this is coming in the side. So upside down, you can see, you can just Google Scroder stairs in this. And this image, you stare at that image, I, I'm not sure whether you, are, you can see that uh, through the telecast uh, because of the network issues. If you stare at this image, you can see that the images are start rotating. If you stare at for a few seconds, the case Akiyoshi Kitoka effect, you can Google search it stare at that image, you feel that these uh, circles are start rotating, moving. I don't know whether it is uh, visible in the live telecast. So now in this image, this is scintillating grid. You just count how many black dots are there in the middle. In the middle. You count the number of uh, uh, white dots or black dots. You can feel that they 
uh, white dots and black dots are interchanging. If you are not seeing it properly, you can Google search it and you can see. Again, it is in this uh, central dot, if you look at the central dot for some time, you feel that the image is shrinking. Look at that for uh, 10 or 20 seconds. Stare at the center black corner. I'm not sure whether it is happening in the live telecast or you can Google search it. Shrinking. Again, in this also you can see that this circle is bigger than this circle because of the comparative dimensions of the surrounding circles. But these are of same diameter. And finally, you count the number of uh, uh, legs for this elephant. Count the number of elephants. Then which are the legs? Can you count it? Or which is the first leg, uh, leg and which is the last leg? So that is why I'm telling that from this image you can count four legs, five legs, six legs, etc. But if you want to get an idea, you should know how many legs can be there for a elephant. Then you can try to find out. So the images are many times illusion, uh, can have many illusion. So getting the right information from the right Im image is very important. So that we have to go for image analysis, gathering useful information from the image using the digital techniques. We can lots of image te uh, analysis techniques are there. So basically it consists of number of mathematical operations. So uh, I'm not going that. So there are uh, image processing is there and image analysis is there. So you have to understand the difference between two. Image processing is computer enhancement of a digitized image using various filters. So like that what we have used in our camera or in your mobile product, the sharpening, the bright contrast, color, all these are image processing. So the computer enhancement of the image to get more details is called image processing. Whereas image analysis is the information extracted from an image. How much area or what is the length of the crack? How much calcium hydroxide is present? So when you are gathering this information, it is called image analysis and enhancement of the image is called image processing. So there are lots of uh, processes are there for image analysis. I am not going. You can search it on any of the literature on gen. Digitizing the image, enhancement, transformations, thresholding, operations, measurement, reporting. And you, the end states are uh, much more uh, informative than me in this because you are dealing with images in your mobile phone itself. You may be doing all these processes in your images to catch and send the uh, uh, data and I'm sure that you are experts in that. So again, digital images, uh, that pixels. Again, the dilution resolution, what I'm talking is that when you are going for a lower resolution, your images will be blurred. You will not get the sufficient data from that. So again, digital image digitization. So you can take a physical image. So if you are doing a compression test on a specimen, you can take a photograph of that. You can uh, convert that to a digital image, the bits and the possible things you know. So image, and you can enlarge that image and you can see how that crack propagate, even the micro cracks, and you can take the measurements and propagation, all these things you can do. Then image size. So that is also very important. The higher size, higher resolution image gives more data points. So you want to say that, and there are lots of techniques which can compress the image and you can uh, store with uh, lots of uh, information. So what is image analysis? Bright, brightness and contrast variations are controlled by a system of input-output curve. Then spatial kernel fitting is there. If you want to know more, you just Google search it. And detailed image analysis is all called as data analysis. Now what we are uh, uh, living in the world is having a big data. So we are dealing with a big data. So this is the, like that what you are giving uh, in uh, doing in your mobile. So this is the original image. So if you want to adjust the color, you know what you are doing in your computer or mobile. So there are lots of packages available. So just taking uh, this line to this side or this side, you can. This is based on a particular software, so you can contrast this. So let us see what happens. 
So if you are going for a higher side, if you are moving to this side, you can see that a more bright image. So uh, for a pro proper contrast, you can see, you can identify more image. So if you are going, if you, black dots are your pores, by doing this, this, this is the black image, you can see in this blood, so in this image it is more clear. And if you want to go for analysis, how many uh, area of black pores or pores are in our your specimen, what do you need to, you want to go for an image analysis. Image analysis softwares are there, so you can identify each of these space by its grayscale. Each of these color will have the grayscale, you know that. So you identify uh, a grayscale for the poles, you find out a uh, lower value for the grayscale and upper value for the grayscale and do some image analysis. So you can identify only that gray, gray changes. You can give a special color to uh, that uh, grayscale region and that image you can do some image analysis and you can identify how much area with that particular uh, grayscale. So that will give you an indication of how much pores uh, or that particular material in your uh, specimen. So again, smoothing, you know that smoothing of the image makes it more uh, clear and sharpening. All these are images for that what we are doing. So in examples of image analysis application in material research, so again, crack specimens, I told you, you do the uh, uh, Compressive stress analysis, take these cracks and take all these photographs together and you can go for a crack image. So, you even with that, you can uh, make a concrete with a normal strength concrete and high strength concrete. So, get the cracks and you can see that this is load is increasing and the crack uh, length is given. So, for normal strength concrete, we see when the crack propagate and how the crack propagate and the length of concrete. If you are going for the high strength concrete, what is when it will crack and the crack propagate, all this information. So again, if you want to see the plastic shrinkage cracks on the specimen, what is the width of the crack, length of the crack? Normally, these uh, uh, cracks are very minute in nature. So take a photo, uh, photograph, digital, and you can use uh, different uh, 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 so this is actually here without the concrete and without the concrete. So I made it, or made it white. Cracks. The pores are made in black. So now these cracks are more. If you want, you can take the width, length, or crack anything you want to. You can take from the image analysis. So I think um, at the end of the scanning electron microscopy. So I I'm sorry that I went little. Uh, took longer duration, so the other techniques it will take 10 more minutes. If you have time, we can just mention or we can uh, uh, limit and take some questions from here. So, Prabha, madam, yeah. yes, sir. only five more minutes are there, so we can uh, close it. If the yeah. participants post, so yeah, due yeah. to this time, we can yeah, have we can, uh, yeah, we can have the uh, uh, question answer section here. Yeah, I think if they are going for that will be too much. If you want, we can discuss some other time. Yes, okay. Sir, sir. Now I invite our student Hema Lakshmi to deliver the vote of thanks. Yeah. Hema Lakshmi? Yes, ma'am. Honorable guest of the session, respected HOD, department faculties, faculties from other institutions, industry professionals, and students. I'm Hema Lakshmi, a sophomore year student of civil engineering from Ishwari Engineering College. On behalf of the organizing team, ICA students chapter of Ishwari Engineering College, I would like to express our profound gratitude to Dr. Elson John, Associate Professor, Department of Civil Engineering of MACE Kerala, who is also the secretary of ICA Kochi chapter for his informative and highly interesting presentation on microstructural characterization of concrete. Thank you, sir. Also, I wish to express my intense gratitude to our HOD, Dr. S. Lavanya Prabha, the convener of the session, and our coordinator, Mrs. G. Prabha, Assistant Professor, Department of Civil Engineering of Ishwari Engineering College, for showing their moral support and guidance in organizing the webinar successfully. I thank all the participants for their interest and cooperation in the webinar. We hope you found this session highly useful and informative. Once again, I thank everyone for making this session a great grand success. Thank you all.
So thank you, thank you for uh, giving an opportunity. I really appreciate the effort taken by the uh, students, ICA students chapter uh, for taking up this uh, opportunity. So this is, the future is in your hands. So I really appreciate the efforts you uh, took to arrange this program. So Prabhupada Mahatma 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 I'm really sorry that I was a little busy for the time. That's why it got uh, this much elongated. Right. So, uh, can you see my uh, screen? Yes, sir. So, if you have any qu qu uh, queries or doubts, you can mail to me or WhatsApp uh, me. So, my mail ID and WhatsApp is, number is given. So, anybody you can, of you can uh, mail or uh, contact me. So, it is always uh, very happy to discuss with the students and help them when, whenever they want. So, you can uh, contact me at any time. So thank you once again for the Ishuri College of Engineering, Prabhupada and the HOD and all the uh, students, members and coordinators and who are behind this program. So thank you once again. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you.